Every device on your network has a routing table. And that routing table is used to determine where it should be sending network traffic. Now, if this is every workstation that's on your network, the routing table is relatively straightforward. The routing table says, if you need to send any traffic, send it out the only interface I happen to have available. But if you have a server with multiple interfaces inside of it, or you have a router, the router on your network has to make a decision. What is the best route? Which one of these interfaces really is the best route to send this traffic? And your server with the multiple interfaces has the same question. On most types of systems, whether it's a router or an operating system, there's some command that will allow you to view the existing routing table. On our Windows and Linux devices, this command is the route command. We're going to work with Windows today and look at how to print the routing table, add to the routing table, delete the routing table, change the configuration of a device and its routing table. This operating system that you're using might vary, but the route command is probably one that you'll always use. If it's not the route command we're using here, it will be some derivative of a route command that allows you to view that. What you'll probably end up using most is just a view of the routing table. You're trying to troubleshoot a path between two devices, and you need to understand every hop along the way which direction is the route taking. When you make a change to a route, that's a pretty significant change. You want to be very sure what you're doing. And in those cases, you'll want to use the route command to delete routes, add routes, or change routes that might be existing inside of the computer. On our Windows machine, let's just type in route. And we're going to get a few pages of information that describes the route command. I'm going to scroll up a bit. And we can see this manipulates the network routing table. It gives you a number of options. Dash F clears the routing table completely. So you want to be very careful about using this command. When you clear the routing table, it's very difficult to manually add all of those things back. You may just have to restart your computer to get that back again. You have the dash P command, which makes a route persistent. So you can change or add a route and then use dash P to make sure that if you reboot this computer, that is the setting that's left afterwards. There's IPv4 and IPv6 settings and a lot of other options in here that describe how you might add, change, or delete a particular route. On my computer, if I type route print, a lot of information goes by. And you can see if I scroll back to the top, I have my list of interfaces. I have the actual routing table that's in use. And I have an IPv6 routing table as well. If I use a route print and I pipe it to more, I can see the first page of this. This might help a bit. Hit Enter to go a few lines down. This is my IPv4 routing table. And you can see I have a default route destination with a default netmask 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That is my default route, which means anything that goes out of here that's not in any other part of this routing table, please send it to 10.1.10.1. Well, as you can see on this particular workstation, I actually have two interfaces on it. You can see the other interfaces down here, 169.254.30.204. And that's an interface. It's on link. It's a direct connect link card that I have inside of this machine. So instead of sending all of our traffic to 10.1.10.1, let's say instead that I'd like the default route for all of my traffic to be 169.254.30.204. So we're going to want to make some changes to the routing table. First, I want to get rid of this default route that's up here. So I'm going to use route delete 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 to specify the route. And it says, OK. If I hit my up arrow a couple of times to get back to my route print, and I hit Enter again, you can see the 0.0.0.0 route, my default route, is gone. If I try now to send traffic to anything other than what's in my routing table, it's not going to go anywhere. There's no route to get to that particular network. So we need to add our default route back in here. And I'm going to use a route add, 0.0.0.0. My mask is 0.0.0.0. .0. And let's choose our default gateway, which in my case is going to be 169.254. And my default gateway is .1.1. And we'll hit Enter. And now let's look at our routes now. We've just changed it to be 0.0.0.0. .0 That's our default route. Now it's a new gateway, 169.254.1.1. And now the default route for everything is going to go out that particular port. So this was a pretty dramatic change to how we were sending traffic. We made a significant change. We moved all of our traffic from going out one interface to go out a completely different interface. This route command provides you with a wealth of information, but you want to be sure that you're not accidentally making the wrong route configuration inside of this. But if you're simply troubleshooting or trying to determine if a different route might be better, the route command will be the perfect one to use.